الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم فملك التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم بالشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكم بب تكبيرا الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعيله ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أصله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحرق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما ومشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين It's an honor to be here and I'm going to start by making dua for all of you and all of your families that Allah Azza wa Jal preserve you protect you and your deen and put barakah in your rizq and allow you to raise children that are going to be carriers of this deen and further Islam in this part of the world Today's khutbah, in order to help me deliver its message, I need. I want you to understand the concept. The Arabic term for it is an nisbah, association. But I will try to explain it to you by way of some easy examples before we get to the ayah that I want to discuss with you. If somebody says, "Hey, if you, you have a very famous scholar, and you meet a student of that very famous scholar." And the student, people point to them and say, you know, he's, he's the student of Sheikh so-and-so. So they created a nisbah, an association between the student and their teacher. And all of a sudden, your opinion of this person changed because now they're associated with something high or someone prestigious. Now you assume them to be more, more knowledgeable, someone you can ask questions to because there's a connection. Similarly, if I were to say to you, this, is, this person works for the president, all of a sudden, this becomes high profile because he's got a direct line of access to the president. But this works in negative ways too. If you know, you know, somebody who has a criminal history and you say, this guy is that guy's best friend. You know, that guy in jail, that's his best friend. Automatically, he's probably halfway guilty already. Probably already done something messed up because he's associated. You know, you're, you're, you're either dignified by association you became a VIP by association, or you became a criminal by association, you're guilty by association, you're honored by association, right? And people do this a lot and they make, they try to make an association with someone to maybe feel better about themselves, right? And we do this so much in our life that, you know, if somebody ever got a chance to meet the president or got the chance to meet, I don't know, some, some billionaire or something, and they take a picture with them. They don't just take the picture and keep, they maybe print the picture, put it in their home, anybody walks in, oh, yeah, really? And that's your, that's your Facebook profile or that's your background profile image because people need to see who you are associated with 
because they're like, oh, wow, this guy, mm, this has got some connections, you know? So the idea of association, everybody understands. But now think of it another way. You know, there's a lot of stories about uh, Amazon, the company Amazon, and one of the stories about them is that they, especially in, in the United States, that they have very gruesome, grueling working hours for their employees, and they don't give them many breaks, and they keep them on a timer and all of this kind of stuff. So when you say, hey, this guy works for Amazon, or he works in the Amazon warehouse, immediately you start feeling sorry for them. Like, you must not have another choice but to work here because the way they treat you, I know. Right? So if you associate someone with working for somebody who is oppressive, who is, you know, who treats them badly. Oh, this guy is a taxi driver in that country. Oh, I know how they pe I know how they treat taxi drivers in that country. Man, you work for those people, I feel sorry for you. Right? Now, I'm giving you all of this, these examples to get to the point. And the point is the ayah that I wanted to share with you from Surah Al-Furqan. The association we have is with Allah. We are ibad of Allah, we're slaves of Allah. So we're connected to Allah by that relationship. What Allah called us in this ayah, ibad of Rahman, we are servants and slaves of Ar Rahman. So just like if I tell you I'm associated with this kind of teacher or that kind of person, you immediately have an impression of what that must mean for me. If Allah is telling us there are some people who are associated with Allah, and not just the name Allah, Allah associated them with his name Ar-Rahman. These are Ar-Rahman's servants. If you know a really nice man, a human being, a really nice man, and you say, you know that really nice man who's always nice to kids? These are his kids. These are his children. Immediately you would think, oh, mashallah, these kids are so fortunate. They have such a loving father. I've seen him around children. He's so merciful and so kind. They're so lucky. They must, be being, they must be raised with so much love. When I call, now think about Allah Azza wa Jal. When you say, Ibad al-Rahman, these are the servants of Ar-Rahman. That must mean Allah must have so much rahma on them. Allah must give them so much of His love and His care and His protection and must always be taking care of them. These are special people to Allah because they're connected with Ar-Rahman. They've given themselves to Ar-Rahman. And Al-Rahman is associating himself with them. And so with this description at the end of Surah Al-Furqan, that association that's made, it says something about Allah and it also says something about us. It says about Allah that he, ta he takes care of his servants. He loves and cares for his servants. Allah is not just there to impose his authority on his servants. If he wanted, he could make us like he made the ant and the bird and the tree that follow Allah's commands. Whatever he tells them to do, they do. He made us with choice. He made us, we get to disobey him too. And yet he's still Ar-Rahman to us. He's still merciful and loving to us. But on the flip side of that, from my perspective, me being connected to Ar-Rahman means that Allah is so, has so much Rahma on me, what effect does that have on my personality? Like, what does that do to the way that I deal with people? What does that do to the way that I see everyone in, my, in, in life? I meet a random stranger, what goes through my mind? I deal with my family, do I, am I aware of the fact that I, at this moment, I represent Ar-Rahman because I'm associated with Ar-Rahman, right? You know, sometimes you go to a, a restaurant and the waiter treats you badly, mistreats you, and then you complain to the manager and he gets fired because they cannot tolerate somebody misrepresenting the restaurant. You get fired. I, as a, as a Abd of Ar-Rahman, am the connect, for, for the rest of humanity, I have to become the representative of Ar-Rahman. They don't know him, they know me. And through knowing me, they have a chance of getting to know him. So my treatment of them will immediately make them say, where did you learn this from? Why are you like this? Who's behind this? Oh no, that's because I'm a slave of Ar-Rahman. That's where I got that from. You see, that's how this, this connection works. And if we don't represent the Rahma of Allah and the way we carry ourselves, then what impression are we giving not just about ourselves, what impression, what wrong impression are we giving about Allah to people, to our own family, not even to non-Muslims, even to other Muslims. The first description of Ibad Ar-Rahman at the end of Surah Al-Furqan, in Surah number 25. This is the last passage of Surah number 25. 
The first description Allah gave, you would think the people that are closest to Ar-Rahman will pray to him. They make dua to him. They st stay up in the middle of the night and they do ibadah to him. They give sadaqah for him. They give charity for him. They sacrifice themselves for him. They worship him all the time. They remember him all the time. None of these qualities were mentioned first. In fact, they spend the entire night staying up for their master in sajda and standing was the second quality that was mentioned, not the first. That's not the number one thing that makes them Ibad al-Rahman. There's something, that's the number two thing. Which is pretty amazing. They stay up in the middle of the night. That's a hard thing to do, to just worship Allah. It's hard enough to, for us to pray in the middle of the day, imagine in the middle of the night. And then to do that long hours of the night, that's an incredible, incredible quality. But Allah considers something even more incredible. And He put that as number one. And what is that? الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Ibad al-Rahman are people who walk around on the earth. And I guess the one way to translate this is with humility, but I'll explain a little more. Hawn in Arabic is nu'uma, an nu'uma, wa rakhawa, wa adam kulli salabate. It means you walk softly, you're gentle, you're easy to deal with. So I'm walking on the, by the way, walking on the earth doesn't just mean walking in a desert. <laughs> it means going to the market, it means going to work. It means going to school, it means hanging out with friends, it means visiting family, it means sitting and talking to people, it means dealing with a difficult post office worker, it means difficult talking to the police, talking to... And every interaction you're having is walking on the earth. That's what it represents. And now Allah is saying, these people, their standard, when they, when they deal with people, people they know, people they don't know, their standard is they are soft, gentle, easygoing in the way they deal with people. You come and sit in a restaurant with your family and you sit down and the person comes and says, Two waters. No ice, okay? That's not honan. The person you just told you, Hey, napkins. Hey, we need some forks over here. When you talk to them this way, then you don't see them as a creation of Allah. You see them as your servant and they owe you and you have to talk to them like you own them. And you forget, and I forget that I'm the Abd al-Rahman, and actually they are also, even if they don't know it yet, they are also Abd al-Rahman. And so I have to treat them with that respect, and I have to say, Sir, if you kindly could, can I have a couple of napkins? Can I please have some water? And by the way, what's your name? And then calling them by their name. You know, if you get into the habit of doing that, just asking somebody, there, it's the people who serve you, what's your name? Sometimes you do that, you know what people do? They start crying. I've experienced it. You know why they start crying? Like nobody's ever asked me that before. People don't even see me. People just see that I'm late. People that see that I didn't do this or that or the other. You treat people almost like they're machines. But treating your employees, treating your children, treating neighbors, treating servers, treating random people you meet on this, with just a kind smile, with just soft language, soft body language. Somebody bumps it to you, you could do one of two things. Hey, watch it. What are you doing? Or you could say, and they say, I'm sorry, it's, it's perfectly fine. Do you need help? You, can, you, can, you, you have a choice. You have a choice between those two options. And Allah is saying the people that recognize that they represent Rahman all the time, they are His ibad on the earth, that when they go around and deal with people, that they don't have this kind of reaction. But then, the question is, if you're so soft, people will walk all over you. You're told, man, if you live in a tough world, you can't just be nice because then people will take advantage of you and you're just going to get robbed and stolen from and all of that. Look, your manners is something else. And your principles is something else. Just because you're nice doesn't mean you're allowing yourself to be taken advantage of. Which is why, if you look, look at the early commentaries on this ayah, on the meaning of the word haun, in Imam al-Tabari, he noted, noted many, many salaf who commented on this ayah and they keep repeating two words. As-sakinatu wal waqar Was-sakina wal waqar Yani yamshuna bil-sakina wa yamshuna bil waqar Which means they walk calmly. They're very calm. So people around them become calm too. They don't escalate a situation, they de-escalate a situation. And yet at the same time, they walk with dignity. They have self-respect. I'm not going to be so kind that I'll allow you to insult me. 
That's not going to happen either. So I don't have to become like a porcupine. I've got spikes all over me that you don't even come near. But I don't have to become so soft that you walk all over me either. There's that balance that is captured in the word Conan. And even then, you, you, can, you can put someone in their place, but you can do that with a smile. You can do that kindly. And that's, that's what you have to learn to do, what I have to learn to do if we're going to be Ibat al-Bahman. And the thing is, some people are easy to deal with and some people are hard to deal with. Take the example of a teacher. A teacher has students in their class. Some kids are very well behaved. They listen. They respect the teacher. They're eager to do the work. And some kids want to talk back. They want to disrespect. They want to get up. They don't want to listen. And as soon as they don't want to listen, the teacher says, Hey, you, sit down. Do this. Do that. Immediate reaction, right? And imagine this principle that the teacher calls that one child that is behaving, misbehaving, the son that's misbehaving, the young man who's misbehaving, the woman, the girl that's misbehaving, calls them over, sits them down, has a gentle conversation with them. Do you not like me? Is there something that you're angry about? Can you talk to me? I really want to understand. Where is this behavior coming from? And all of a sudden they're like, I thought you're supposed to yell at me. Why aren't you yelling at me? Why are you being nice? Where is this coming from? This is actually called hin, and this is part of the tafsir of home. That yet the amaluna ma'an nas bin hin. They deal with people, they, the people were expecting anger, and you treated them with dignity anyway. You know, there's, there's somebody that, uh, not recent, recently, I was going somewhere, and somebody wanted to ask me a question. And it was a very long question. It was late at night, and they wanted a long question to be answered. And I said, my dear, my family's waiting, my baby's sleeping, I have to go. Yeah, but this is a very important question. I really need to ask you. So they asked again. And I said, I would love to answer this question, but I cannot do that in 30 seconds. I'll probably end up giving an entire lecture on this question for you. I can do that. But I can't do it right now because my family's waiting, if you allow me. But Akhi, I'm not going to see you again. You have to answer this question. And then he was, he was holding my hand and he wasn't letting go of my... You know, she, they shake your hand and they don't let go. So now I'm trying to pull back and he's not letting go. Because this is a really important question. And then he repeated the question as if I never heard the question again. And at this point, I have a choice. I could pull my hand and say, you know what? Leave me alone and walk away. Or I could say, if you could just let go of my hand, then I can go take care of my baby. And inshallah, I will not be answering your question right now because I can't. Not because I don't care, because I can't. And I hope you can understand that as soon as I have the opportunity, I will. Can you trust me? And he said, okay, okay, okay. Yes, 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 I understand. There's different ways of dealing with people. There's different ways. There's that, that conversation could go a very different way. That could go, a, I could just pretend not to even see the guy. Like I said, brother, 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 brother. I could just walk right by him and not even look at him. I could do that. That's an option. But it violates haum. It violates the amshuna of the haum. And I'm not going to sacrifice the, the needs of my family to take care of him. I'm not going to do that either. So I'm going to have to find that middle. And that's as-sakina wal waqai. They're both things at the same time. And you'll be put in those kinds of situations all the time. But what's the extreme case? The extreme case is, What about you meet people that don't control their emotions? Sometimes you meet people that get very angry. And jahal is actually not just ignorance. Jahal means an inability to control your emotions. Somebody has the inability to control their voice, or to control their behavior, or to control their temper, or to control their, their place. You know, somebody just grabs you and says, hey, I want to talk to you. Well, let go of me. What are you doing? Right? In those kinds of situations. What do you do with that? You de-escalate the situation. And Allah says, qanu salaman, which means two things. They say salam, they say peace, meaning I need you to calm down. Salam also means goodbye. You walk away from the conversation. And qalu salam can also be a hal, which means they speak peacefully. Even though they're raising your voice, you're not raising your voice. They're escalating, you're not escalating. Right? And so as, as the time wraps up, because I know many of you have to get back to work, so I don't want to take long overtime from, from the khutbah, but I'll share one more quick ayah with you. This was from Surah Al-Furqan. But the other ayah that I wanted to share with you in this context belongs to Surah Al-Isra, uh, so also called Surah Bani Israel. Allah says there, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا 
don't walk on the earth with marah, which also gets translated as pride. But let me tell you something about marah. Land where the, the plants grow super quick is called ardun madiha. Actually, that's what it's called, okay? And then uh, when you shoot an arrow and the arrow shoots out quickly, that arrow is called maruh. It's maruh. Okay, that's what actually maruh means. What does that mean for us as a person? Allah says, don't walk on the earth quick to react. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't just explode. Don't just, you know, be spontaneous. Calm down, understand the situation, absorb before you decide to react. It also maybe even suggests, don't be quick to open your mouth. Maybe open your ears better than you open your mouth. Right? This is wala tabshifid of the marahab. These are the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. This is what they develop inside of themselves. This is a quality I have to develop in me and I have to see. Maybe it's easier for me to have this quality with some people because I like them. And it's harder for me to have this quality with some other people because I don't like them. <laughs> but actually the test here is to, to have this kind of approach even, in, even when dealing with difficult people. Even when dealing with difficult people. May Allah Azza wa make us people that live up to the beautiful teachings of His book. May Allah Azza wa make us that Ibadul Rahman that walk on the earth with Hawn, that don't walk on the earth with Marah, that aren't spontaneous and overreacting and, you know, at, at combust and explode in anger or any kind of reaction. May Allah give us that maturity and that composure that when people see it, they say, where did you get that from? I've never seen anyone that has so much self-control. How are you so calm? Anybody else would have gone crazy. Why are you so composed? And then you say, well, this is from my Rabb, Ar-Rahman, let me introduce you. So you didn't have to give da'wah. The way you carried yourself actually wanted them to know, Wait, what university did you graduate from? That's the university of the word of Allah. That's where I got this from, right? May Allah Azza wa make us that kind of representative of His word. And may Allah Azza wa keep us from becoming like the Jahilun. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الحكيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم